Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of your favorite current affairs uh, program, 60 Minutes Nigeria. My name is Egosa Agbola, your anchor on the program. Today's program, we'll be taking a look at national issues that has to do with the common man. And that is the trending issue of the minimal national wage, new minimal national wage. Uh, the good thing is that the Trapatite Committee on uh, the Minimum Wage concluded its uh, deliberation and uh, submitted its report to Mr. President, President Muhammadu Buhari, and that actually gave uh, rest to troubled minds and the restive nerves were calmed when the report was submitted. And uh, before we continue on the program, let me quickly introduce to you my very eminent personalities. I have with me a clergyman and, of course, a senior special advisor to the governor of Edo State on religious matters, Pastor Ego Saomori. Nice to have you on the program. God bless. I also have with me a very, very erudite uh, political analyst uh, talking about um, Austin Eboigbe. Nice to have you Thank in you the for studio. Having me. Good afternoon. Okay. So, let's allow you to uh, watch a footage of what transpired at the presidential villa when the uh, Tripartite Committee on New Minimum Wage, uh, when the report was officially uh, submitted to President Mohamed Buhari. After carefully weighing these critical factors and bearing in mind the overriding interests of the economy, the committee while noting the offer of 24,000 by the federal government is recommending an increase in the existing national minimum wage from 18,000 Naira to 30,000 Naira. We believe that the implementation of the recommended minimum wage will no doubt boost the purchasing power of workers, increase consumption expenditure, and ultimately stimulate business and overall economic growth. In a way, both arguments are valid. I want to assure you all that we will immediately put in place the necessary machinery that will close out these open areas. Our plan is to transmit the executive bill to the National Assembly for the passage within the shortest possible time. I am fully committed to having a new National Minimum Wage Act in the very near future. Let me use this opportunity to recognize the leadership of the organized labor and private sector, as well as representatives of state and federal government for all your hard work. When the 18,000 minimum wage was actually uh, implemented in 2011, every worker was paid. We knew also what happened. Towards 2015, most of the states emptied their treasury, and therefore they had difficulty. If there is a will, we are certain that there will be a way out, and therefore we cannot hide under that situation to now continue to lament the situation of Nigerian worker. All of us knew also in the economy a lot of factors have affected the purchasing power of Nigerian worker. Inflation, all of us are aware. Uh, importantly, the exchange rate. The value of 18,000 Naira then was almost around $140. Today it's less than $50, $60. That's what transpired in Abuja, the presidential villa, Ama Pepo. Uh, chairman of the Trapatite uh, Committee on the New Minimum Wage uh, eventually submitted uh, the report of the committee to President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, it's now official and a single digit of 30,000 recommended uh, to the President uh, for assent. And we understand that it will pass through uh, the uh, legislature and uh, it will become law. Uh, that's what we are told. Uh, well, the new minimum wage, uh, we thought there would be industrial action on the 6th of this month, and so many Nigerians were really perturbed. 
but that did not happen. As the NLC uh, president, uh, Yuba, made that announcement that the strike has been suspended and uh, uh, frayed nerves were calmed. Gentlemen, we start with Pastor Ego Samori. Yeah, frayed nerves calmed. I, I guess you're happy that the strike did not happen. But what's your take on this new minimum wage? Uh, first and foremost, uh, we want to thank God for the government that is presently on board. Okay. Uh, they are sensitive and they are aware of what the civil servants' role is in the issue of governance. And by extension, they believe so much that for the government to run properly, the civil service must be carried along. And so 30,000 Naira as minimum wage is not as if it's sufficient, but it's, it's a ray of hope for the civil service to understand that with time, there will be an improvement. But let me also say here that the governor of Edo State, Mr. Godwin Norwegasel Baseki, before the issue of the, the panel that... Yes, yeah, the tripartite uh, uh, committee. That man that I'm a people okay. panel presented that recommendation. He okay. has said it that he is willing and ready to pay 30,000 Naira minimum wage. He didn't stop there. He has also set the record in the civil service of the state. The last week, he gave a award, cash and material award to civil servants, and also automatic promotion. I was sharing with uh, a permanent secretary who is almost 35 years in the service. Okay. I said, this record that Mr. Governor had just set, how do you look at it? He said he has been 35 years in service. He had never seen a thing like this. So also, there are some people in government who are so sensitive about those who are also part and parcel of the governors. So I believe that what has just happened is a clear manifestation of what is going to begin to happen subsequently. Okay. Well, uh, let's get the thoughts of uh, Oster Boigbe. The new minimum wage. Uh, some uh, Nigerians uh, still believe that 30,000 is not the answer. Uh, but others believe that, well, is a step in the right direction. Uh, against the backdrop of the fact that the governor's forum are not so comfortable with 30,000. What's your take? Yes, thank you. Uh, on this issue of 30,000, yes. to the best of our knowledge, uh, it's, it is not something that will be completely agreed upon. Okay. It's only a recommendation from the committee. Uh, we were told that the president has actually uh, endorsed the amount. But again, we heard it from the horse's mouth. Uh, the secretary to, of, to, of the, uh, sorry, the minister for information. Okay, Lai Mohammed. Yeah, saying that... Uh, the president aligns himself with the increment, but he has not already said it is 30,000 naira. But good or bad, like uh, the pastor said, it's not as if 30,000 naira is uh, good enough uh, considering the present way things are in the country. But again, it's a ray of hope. Uh, it's, it's, it encourages you as a civil servant to continue to commit your quarter and time to the development of the country. Like I said earlier this morning at a sister station, that the civil service is the soul of every government. Uh, hence, if they go on strike, you can imagine the catastrophic, can, you know, what happens to the economy and all okay. of that. Uh, I've always said that, uh, we've always said in this program, like I've always said that uh, it is not enough to say this is the minimum wage. You know, it's only unfortunate that uh, we are struggling with something that has long, uh, you know, looking at the law that, that sets up the minimum wage, it's something that has, has to be you know, uh, upgraded at, at, at every particular time. But that is not what we're saying today. It has been delayed from one government to another. When the previous government came about, prior to the elections too, minimum wage was increased, I mean, for, by over 50%. And then we saw governors struggling to pay 18000 except until the president came and then started giving out bail funds. I'm sure, if I'm not mistaken, that today there are still states who are owing salaries. Everyone. So I, I wonder if 
we end up approving 30,000 which to the best of another is a far cry because that really does nothing for you as an individual. If, if you multiply 30,000 naira by 12 months, you get a little above 500,000 naira. I mean, that will not sort out accommodation, feeding, and transportation for you, and then all the basic things of life. So uh, I think that uh, we, are, we, are, we are just appealing and hoping that uh, government and governors will try and put their house in order and be able to pay this minimum wage so as to avoid citizen strikes action from, you know... Uh, the organized labor. The organized labor. Okay. I, I will say that uh, more disturbing for me, like I said earlier, it's not just the wage. You see, I don't think at this point in time in this country, any wage is good enough. Let the minimum wage be 50,000 naira today. It will not take care of the basic things and the basic needs of Nigerians. I think that at this point in time, government should begin to focus you know, on ensuring that they create that enabling environment for, for, for Nigerian workers to be able to at least uh, put this amount you know, uh, into work and let it begin to reflect even in the uh, uh, living standard. I mean, you, if, if the healthcare is not there, the, uh, tango for N NHIS, but again, the NHIS is not, is not, is not broad enough. So if, if Nigerians have to pay for their healthcare, if the Nigerian worker has to pay for its healthcare, if the Nigerian worker has to pay for its security, because at the moment with the, the level of insecurity in this country it's 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 it's, it's got beyond what you can imagine. Okay. If the Nigerian workers will have to provide the basic amenities for themselves, I mean, the, there's the I, I can't remember the last time we talked about pipe bond water. So if the Nigerian worker has to buy water that he takes, that he used to cook, that he used to wash the sky if he has any, if, if you don't have bonds who will uh, assist you with, okay. with, with soft loans to facilitate to, to, yeah. to acquire a vehicle with a very low uh, interest rate. Mm. I mean, then to what end is the minimum wage or the increase in the salary? Okay. So, at Austin, I think what the point is trying to make here is that there's need to revamp the economy. Exactly. And um, make living standard uh, affordable. I think that's the point Austin uh, is making here that uh, despite the minimum wage, uh, if the economy is not revamped, if the prices of goods and services do not uh, nose dive, do not go down, then the minimum wage will be swallowed up. I think that's the point he's making. But let's look at this other issue, and we, we get the thoughts of Pastor Gosa Mori. Now, this minimum wage, uh, like Austin has said, uh, some states' governments are still having a problem paying 18000 But some school of thought believe that states should have been allowed to negotiate minimum wage with their workers. You subscribe to that. Instead of a general one, minimum wage general, uh, as it is now. Well, for the nation to move on smoothly, okay. there must be a center of authority. That's why the National Assembly had to be the one who finally give the clearing house okay. for this minimum wage to become valid. If you say each state to negotiate, let me tell you, my brother, some state will not afford to pay 10,000 naira. That is the gospel truth. But if it comes from a national pulse, it's agreed nationally, then they will be now be forced to. Because again, we supposed to have to look outside the box. Don't be, you see, that's why some states, they are, we are always considering Abuja, what they come from Abuja to sustain their state. The the IG, uh, yes. IGRO is not properly harnessed, then you don't even talk about looking outside the box. There are some, there are some states that are into production of things. Okay. Rice production, just name it. Like Kirby State. Like, so, so what we are saying, if it is, <laughs> even civil servants on their own should look outside the box. I, I, am, I know some partners who have big farms. Every weekend they go to their farms to subsidize whatever they get from the source. So you cannot just hold your hand and say, end of most salary, that's what I'll be relying on. So it must be from the federal you know, a level, which will now make many of the states be compelled to okay. do the needful. Okay. But that is the most salaries you know, in operation. If you don't encourage them, <laughs> there will be a lot of chaos in most states. Even like, I can't, we don't need to mention some states here. Like, you know, almost seven to eight more salary. Now you are talking about 80, 30,000 
That means they are going to be owing about two years. With all the bailout that the president gave, still they are still owing. Did so, they actually use the bailout for the purpose that of, is, uh, that, that is where allocated? We, that is where the AFCC ought to be on their foot. Okay. Because this bailout is made for a specific purpose. It's not to be diverted for any other thing. But they'll just take it and you to address some other personal issues and leave the workers cap in hand. Yeah, that's on workers. By the time their salaries are paid, by the time they address the debt they owe around, they will have it only to take home. So they might even owe their landlords their rent. Yeah. Nearby uh, eatery, they have bought food on credit to eat, bought provisions on credit, they are not paid. Yeah. So, here, here, so these are things that are creating more tensions for the civil service. And they must go to retrain and retrain and retrain and they become more useful to themselves and to the states. Okay, thank you. Uh, also, we're going to, you differ? Yes, sure, I differ. Okay. The, in as much as I want to partially accept what you said, okay. but, but I think that it is the, it is the, the level of irresponsibility that will seen in leadership in this country okay. that has led us into all of this crisis. Just like you give an example of the Bellet Fund. Yeah. And then the pastor said that is the record of the FCC. But again, the FCC can investigate you considering the recent appeal court ruling as the governor. But they cannot remove you and they cannot arrest you and they just can't do anything. They just keep because the there immunity. because you have the, uh, the immunity and all of those things. Then again, there's so much waste in government. Take it or leave it. Like you said, they are in order... This is this is the global. I mean, we're in the global age right now. Yeah. In other climes of the world, where we they operate the same federal system of government, you discover that the minimum wage differs from one state to another, and it relates to time. Not even to uh, uh, what you, they pay you monthly. It, it it relates to the number of hours that you work in in a week. You know, times you know you know like, just like that. Put them together cumulatively into one month. But what we we'll see here is different because first of all. Our federal system of government that we claim to practice is a horse. It's completely wrong. At the moment, we do not practice genuinely the, if, a, a pure and sincere federal system of government. You do not expect the man who lives in rivers, the man who lives in Lagos, to take the same pay with the man who lives in equity, that is preliminarily a civil servant state. And then the houses there are not expensive, compared to a man who lives in Port Harcourt, who lives in Lagos, who paid so much for her rent, who paid so much for, so, to, to survive. And such a man will have to go through daily traffic from Monday to Friday. And the Saturday that you expect him to realize, you want him to go to the farm? I mean, we should be sincere with ourselves. There's so much waste in government, so government must begin to check all of those things. How much does a senator earn as allowances monthly? For instance, 13.5 million, we are told. Now, what is... Which we cannot substantiate. Because yeah, I said we are, I said we are <laughs> told. I said we are told. <laughs> okay. Because today we are still yes. claiming that, we are still crying that we should open up the National Assembly mm. and let's see what they are collecting. Okay. I mean, too many unnecessary things that we give to them. People are supposed, that are supposed to be making laws, we are giving them money in the name of constituency projects. These same people will come and over, over, uh, do oversight functions over uh, projects of the executive and nobody oversights their functions. And the money just go like that. These are all waste. So I, I think that it ends with the, the need to call for restructuring. Okay. I think that Nigeria should go for restructuring. Nigeria should be properly restructured. I think we should practice the real, you know, federal system of government, as it ought to be. Well, not we not progressive presidential system. Not not the, know, not the way <laughs> we practice this. No, Nigeria is a federal unit, so we are supposed to be practicing the federal system of government and not what we're seeing today. But what, okay. what, 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 what we have what we have adopted yeah. is there from what we are exactly. You and know, that, we and, have and a and foreign that, body, and that is wrong. Operating in a strange land, and that is wrong. And and you know there are a lot of fourth so things in, in our constitution in excess, that needs to be corrected. You are aligning with. Um, Nigerians who are calling for restructuring. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Pastor, do you agree to restructuring? Well, well, that's one issue see, what, what is that uh, dominated the uh, discussion you know, uh, for it, some time. It, it, it has been on the, uh, the template of Nigerians okay. that uh, everybody needs restructuring. What's, what is restructuring? 
if you ask me of the definition, my mm -hmm. definition will be different from that of everybody. And yours will be different from mine. Mm -hmm. It's to do things right so that Nigerians will not be poor in their own motherland. Because, for instance, in those states, we have 18 local government. We have three senatorial district. Yeah. Edo North and Edo South, you cannot compare their economic strength. You understand? Mm. But whatever we have as our own subvention is shared prorationally. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. So, if you want to talk about the structure, are you not going to say the structure only at the federal? If you talk about the structure, you have to go down to the bottom to look at government towards because uh, many people have advocated for the structure, but the way we advocate for it, we are not looking at it from the right perspective. How we share our money, that is the number one issue. Okay, if all year comes from your zone, you should be the one who determine what you give to the other side, you go to the center. That is not. It cannot help our cause. Because we cannot borrow a, 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 an operations from outside the shot of this country to want to come and you see like somebody once said say bab my head as you bab my friend oh. your <laughs> head both of you your heads are different shape yes americans over the year it took the time to get to where they are so it also take Nigeria some time to get to where we are dreaming to be okay so that is the way i look at it okay but the issue of too much power at the central you are see, comfortable the, with that because some person no, believe when that say, too much when, power when, you say too central. much power. Yeah, devolution of power. You That's see, what we're also looking at in terms of restructuring. Look at between you and me. Yeah. You know, if you now say, okay, uh, the power we talk about, power that controls the security, number one. That's one of the area people are very much concerned. One state police. Am I right? Yes, yeah, so people are still <laughs> calling for state police. Yeah. In fact, of restructuring. Yes. One state police. If you give some governors that opportunity to create their own state police. They will use it for their elections. <laughs> but they, they will use it to hunt their enemies. But the federal police has also been abused. I mean, you, you see, no, you, see you see a deputy senior president saying, like I have also experienced too, even though as a common man, that, I mean, for a man of his statue, his yes. office that he holds, that for over seven hours he was calling on the federal police and nobody responded to him, and then he's, uh, he's, he's aligning to the father because he's in the opposition. We've also seen, we've also seen, no, we've also, I mean, I'm a young man, we've, we've also seen aspects where, where, you have ideas. where, where, where governors, <laughs> yes. where governors, like the former governor of Ekiti State, when he was contesting election, mm. when he used the fed, his federal might and the federal police in manipulating the elections. So I think that issue of sentiment, whether the governor to use them or not, should not come. That is why we have laws. That's why we have checks and balances. Mm. The, you mean, you have a situation whereby a, a governor is seen on video collecting bribe as we speak at the moment, and then you are going to cut, stop, try to stop the house of I'm all coming, I'm coming back. We're talking about minimum wage, and we we're need to look at it from the economic see, point of view. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that, I think that, I think that other parts see, of this world yeah. yeah. should take example, should take example, yes sir, should take example from Nigeria. You know why? Every every state, every state of this, we must be very careful the way we use it. You see, if you say, a man was caught taking bribe on a video. Ah, it's alleged. Sure. I said it's video. It's a, it alleged. You know, and so, so and, but again, there's, there's an arm of government that is supposed to investigate. And then you go to another arm of government trying to stop that particular arm. Mm -hmm. I mean, then where, where's the independence of see, all the, I'm the reason, Where is the independence of all of this? That, that's the beauty of democracy. Good. The reason, then, the then, reason, then, let me let, 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 yeah. have a, a, a three uh, arms, of government. arms of government. If you are not comfortable the way the legislature want to handle you, you go for the judiciary. Yes. You understand? Okay. So that is the, that's, that's the last the, the, card. The judiciary should not usurp the authority no, of no, the legislature. No, no, okay. No, no, the legislature should not usurp the legislature should not usurp the authority of the executive. The executive should also usurp the authority of the judiciary. Okay. That, that, that is why that is why you see that recently Nigerians were clamoring for the independence of the judiciary. Okay. Hence today the judiciary is autonomous. Hence today state has assemblies they are autonomous. So that one will not usurp the other. The fact remains that on this issue of minimum wage, let's tell ourselves the truth. Mm. You have 36 states and the FCT. Okay. And each of these states have completely blessed, considering mineral resources. Okay. Take care of those states, for example. The donut you are talking about is blessed. The solid minerals are all there. Okay. Those central is dynamic. It's blessed. If okay. you take agriculture there, it will blow up. Rice. And those yeah, sat, the same thing. So okay. take it into the wider spectrum yeah. like Nigeria. So 
I think that every state should be in charge of their God-given resources, manage it properly, and give a percentage to the center. That's under restructuring. Yes, that's the idea. In that same, in that same way, you discover that states will be able to pay as high as 120000 for minimum wage, while others pay as low as 10000 right? It depends <laughs> on what every state can do. And that way, you know, you will be fair to one another. As a gay saying, 30000 naira minimum wage, and the man in Lagos will have to sweat and then do... Uh, tomorrow you say that civil servants are corrupt. Because there are a lot that... Like, I was just analyzing to you. The okay. basic infrastructure, the basic amenities are not there. So how do you expect this man to survive? Okay. Thank you, Austin. But gentlemen, I hope you're enjoying the program. Uh, we are looking at uh, the new minimum wage, a new minimum wage in focus, and it's generating uh, reactions from my guests on the show. Um, Pastor Rosa Mori has made very valid points. He talked about the Do State in particular, and uh, let me put that in, the, in a better perspective or in proper perspective. The Do State governor, when the NLC or the organized labor in a peaceful protest uh, met him in government house, he told them that whatever is agreed at the federal level is willing to pay. And that means that the Dose governor is willing to pay whatever is agreed. That's his word. That's his promise. Uh, Pastor Wilson, correct? Yes. That's, that's what true. he said. Okay. So, um, Austin Eboigwe has also said that uh, there's really need uh, for restructuring so that uh, states can negotiate. States can, you know, go into revamping the economies, uh, that states can actually become productive. And if states are buoyant financially, they can now negotiate what they can pay. Because it is believed that some states can pay more than 30,000 minimum wage. While the protest was on, by ESA government agreed to pay 30,000. And that was before the tripartite committee on minimum wage submitted its report. <laughs> so states, uh, from what the is saying, can actually evolve their own agreement. Okay, so, but we'll continue because there's a lot to talk about. Um, minimum wage, is this supposed to be triggered by protest? Or Good. there should be uh, a template that should take off itself? Let's start with Pastor Murray. Well, uh, I want to thank you for this very uh, wonderful uh, uh, question, idea, question okay. you brought yeah. up. You know, every civil servant has promotion timing. Okay. Maybe after four years or after five years, you go to the next level. Now, the same way, the issue of minimum wage ought to be organized. But I want to say that the, the organized labor, they have not also helped the system. You will be asked why or okay. what have they really done. Because this whole idea is it's supposed to be a synergy between the organized labor and government at every given time to look ahead. Okay, 2019, what does the government have in store for the civil servants? In 2020, like some people say vision 2020. Yes. So every civil servant will be looking forward to the so that very year there will be an increment in their pay. If it's arranged that way, all this issue of strike, threatening of strike, will not ever occur. But is it done because the labor union, they have not done their own work? Because the government, it's just under the threat, we are going to strike. The government considered. So if they have done their own work properly, the government know when, as at when due, they always give them their dues. Okay. Uh, Austin, what's your take on uh, that issue? Yeah, if, if, if we go by the history of minimum wage, I think okay. that it's an already made template. Um, government is aware, labor is aware. But again, every time we try to politicize issues in this country, okay. and then we continue to miss it. Uh, it's rather fortunate, just like I mentioned, that we're entering into an election here. We discover that it's, it's always during election years that you see labor agitating for a new minimum wage because they expect the power, uh, the government at the center at that time, they expect that to start government to agree because it will be one of those things that you converse with when it comes to voting during elections. And so they have a way of coercing government into agreeing. And then when you now get into the new administration, government now finds it difficult to begin to make these things. And that is why they must agree properly now 
you know, on every issue that, has to, that relates to the minimum wage, you know, the, 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 the cement is that will properly cleared. So we don't enter into a new year after the election and then we're having issues with states struggling to pay minimum wage and all of that. Again, I, I will say that, uh, like, 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 it, it, like I've said before, see, it is not as if labor do not make these demands. Okay. They only seize this opportunity considering our present political system and the way our manner, you know, politicians, party members are always desperate to retain power in Africa. Mm. To say, okay, we're agitating. I mean, they've been agitating for a review of this minimum wage even from the onset. Uh, but this, this was like a very good time. <laughs> because again, you will not begin okay. to politicize it and say, okay, yeah. when the new government comes in, they will pay this. When I mean, when, when, when uh, former uh, uh, president, Good luck, Blade Jonathan was contesting in 20. Uh, you know, he, he knew very well. The governors themselves knew very well that paying 80,000 naira would be a problem. But he agreed. And then, because again, until we make up our mind to reduce the waste in government, okay. you see, I mean, a governor who cannot pay minimum wage is having so much hate, goes with all kinds of convoy, waste public funds, they lose so many and they, they, at the end of the day they come and say it's play bargaining and then nothing happens to them and then if your friend becomes president you take presidential pardon. See, until we begin to put these things properly and put them right, it will continue like this and I, I mean, it, it will not go away for economy. Okay. Sister Minis, Nigeria. I hope you are enjoying the program. We'll take a break now and when we come back, our uh, Nigerians uh, or the countries are gog with uh, festivities. Uh, it happened in Abuja, the royal visit uh, from uh, the British uh, royal family uh, visiting Nigeria, and uh, also uh, they visited Lagos. Uh, we'll talk about uh, the implication. Uh, does Nigeria stand any chance of gaining from the visit of Prince Charles? That will be after this break. Okay, nice to have you back on the program. Uh, we've looked at the issue of uh, the new minimum wage, and um, we'll be looking at uh, the other topic on the program, and that's the significance of Prince Charles, uh, Duchess of Conwell's visit to Nigeria. Uh, we get started with that. What do we stand to benefit from this three-day tour? Of Nigeria, we we'll start with uh, Pastor Omori. Ah, well, first and <laughs> foremost, you know they are our colonial masters. Yes. They, they gave us independence, and this remains so integral to our growth, to everything that I to do with Nigeria. Okay, you know, as a country, and uh, being the first family coming here is it's a, it's a very significant thing in the sense that. They have come to add values to what we have on ground. Okay. Uh, Couple with the fact that they are over the years they've been hearing a lot, and uh, you know with, with the social media of a thing, the world is a global village. Yes. And uh, there's nothing that has happened here that they are not aware of. They have heard of us so much insecurity. They are here physically to attest to that fact whether Nigeria is even safe or not. They have so much investment here. The British have so much investment in Nigeria, mm. and more so. Uh, there are a lot Nigerians are undergoing training there, and also Nigerians are also very much involved in their economy. So they are just here to compare notes and also to tell us we are doing well. You know, the sky is your springboard. I believe that is the number one thing I want to attest to that the purpose of Prince Charles coming. Okay, uh, Austin. Yes, uh, is he's the head of uh, the Commonwealth? And uh, Nigeria is a member of the Commonwealth. And as such, there are, there are mutual uh, understanding and uh, things that you benefit from being a member of the Commonwealth. Uh, Nigeria is not the only country visiting Africa. He's visiting, uh, visiting uh, all other Nigerian countries. He was in Ghana. Yes, uh, but from what we know, uh, more peculiar to this visit is the issue of Heda's farmers clash uh, as a nation. Uh, they are way ahead of us. Uh, 
So, and even uh, whether or not we, we, we are still a developing nation, it's expected that uh, we'll take counsel, we'll take advice on how to go about it. Hence, the, the meeting with uh, our very revered traditional rulers to ensure that there is peace in the North Central, uh, there's peace in the Middle Belt, and there's peace, you know, everywhere in Nigeria. Uh, there's this, like I, I, I said earlier, there's this uh, mutual benefits you enjoy as a member of the Commonwealth. UK is doing so much with regards to education in Nigeria. The DFID project, uh, we understand that it's going to officially commission their office in Kano. They are doing so much in educating the Nigerian child, especially in the northern part of Nigeria. You know, you discover that uh, there's this uh, issue of, uh, we won't call it stigmatization, but, but this issue of uh, whether it's traditional belief or whatever, on, on trying not to educate it, the 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 the, the gay child, mm -hmm. uh, and so they are doing so much to ensure that uh, you do not relegate the gay child to just sexual harassment and marriage, but the gay child should also be educated. The gay, gay child is as powerful as as the male child. Uh, there's also this issue of uh, um, Prince Charles, that as we all know, is, is a great fan of. Uh, uh, it's, it's so concerned about global warming, okay. uh, and so he talks about it every now and then. So I think like what was heard from him is addressing those issues properly. Nigeria is almost becoming a dumping site for everything. We, the waste that we produce, we mm. don't even manage them properly. You know, uh, we just hope that one day, like he said, that this waste will not uh, collapse on all of us. Mm. So I think he's probably looking at those issues because Nigeria is key in Africa. Nigeria is significant in Africa. It's not just to say that you are the general of Africa when you are not following uh, uh, global trends as, it, as it ought to be at the moment. Yeah. And they probably look at the issue of uh, warfare. The, the, the training between the Nigerian Navy and uh, okay. the, 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 Navi the, the British, the, the British Navy. Navy and all of that. Okay. So, I mean, too many things so to Nigeria benefit. To benefit. A, lot, a lot, a lot, uh, a lot. Training and expertise. A lot. But again, uh, in, in the fight against corruption, mm. you know, when, when someone of the caliber of Prince Charles visits, it's a genuine opportunity for the Nigerian president and the Nigerian government to express the dissatisfaction uh, with the way and manner they hate uh, politicians okay. and civil servants and looters of our common patrimony, you know, help them to get all of this money and uh, and use it to develop their nations while we are suffering. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, and then even the partition of these funds, we the too many cumbersome processes. I, I think that it is time that uh, it's an opportunity for the president and the government to really discuss properly and see how they can assist us with their laws to ensure that. Uh, the United Kingdom does not become a safe haven for these looters. Okay, thank you. Well, Pastor Mori, um, the visit of uh, the royal family to Nigeria was dented when uh, he cancelled his uh, earlier proposed uh, trip to Joss. Uh, that triggers insecurity. Um, don't you think that the federal government need to really do more than uh, it has done in terms of uh, ensuring security of Nigerians? Well, first and foremost, uh, Nigeria before now, you know, uh, was uh, worse off in terms of the no go areas of part of the north. Okay. I remember very clearly some local government were under the under siege. Siege. Talking about the northeast now, yes. Boko Haram, Sojin Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, so far, so good. You know, Rome was not built in a day. So there is progressive. Tendency okay. by the government. If, if the government says, okay, you cannot go to Joss for now, it to first and foremost understand the volatile situation in Joss for now. Because Joss used to be a very peaceful state. Yes. But suddenly, some miscreants, you know, have taken over arms, distorting and causing chaos in that part of the country. Mm. So for you to now, expose our august visitor it will be a very dangerous thing so government taking that decision that this is very laudable you can't condemn the government for that you can't condemn. the man is simply go to canon we know that no the point i'm trying to make is, okay. uh, for the father i couldn't go to just again mm. don't you think that a lot need to be done in terms of the security of this country yes all hands are on deck 
as it were. But yeah. again, again, that is part of his visit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like I just said, want to some uh, of this he, he came to, to ensure that there is peace in the country, okay. especially in the middle bed. Yeah. And then he, he needed to go to have a first-hand information. Uh, but again, as a researcher, if you intend to go and have a first-hand information, and at that moment, it is not convenient uh, for the sake of the security of your life. Like we always say, there's mm -hmm. no man that is immune against insecurity. Okay. It can happen to anybody. So I think it's, it's fair enough that the Nigerian government and the UK government is not pretending over it. Okay. We are not saying that so all is well. So what should be done to ensure security of this country? I if, want us to talk about the issue of the insecurity. What should be done? What you have any advice? That you can the, first, the first advice I should yeah. give is that, you see, if there are no strange people coming from the blues or from, from the sky. Yeah. You must have what's called community policing. Okay. Because information matters a lot to security. The street you live in, if a street person comes to that street and the, the people in that street, they don't take notice of the person, before you know it, it can create terrible things. Okay. So all that we need to do, that's the more reason that meeting with the traditional rulers and all that, is to let them know that this is how to start from the grassroots. It's community policing. And if you have information, don't hold it. Okay, we're we gradually coming back to show state police. That was earlier said. Community police is okay. state police. Okay. Because you see, when you are not informed, you are deformed. Yes. So many people, they, they, they have information, but they don't share it. Police and all security agents ask for it. If you have information, are you sure the information is okay, is valid? Let us have it. So that we might use it to, to stop every dangerous thing happening within the community. Okay. You have something to add? Yes. I, I think that Nigerians are sharing information. Yes. My problem is this. Let us be decisive as a nation. The waste we call security votes is completely unnecessary. Stop giving security votes to governors because, first of all, it's unconstitutional. It is illegal. But don't you think these governors are actually using they, security votes? They, 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 they are using security votes to... You may not know. Because see, no, let's they, get us this thought. Yes, we'll come to listen, you, Pastor. Listen, yes. listen. How many police officers do you have in Nigeria? And what is the Nigerian population? Okay. What is the security infrastructure that the Nigerian army can boost off today when it comes to the issue of fighting terrorism? What is the security infrastructure that the Nigerian Navy can boast of today when it comes to the issue of fighting uh, oil theft and, and, and all of those things and, and that green dollar economy? What is the security architecture that is on ground for the Nigerian Air Force to say, yes, we can go on air and genuinely fight and secure our nation, whether externally or eternally? Okay. What is the welfare of these security men? It's not enough for you to call a security officer to say you are being attacked. The question is, the security man you are calling, is he as firm and as, as, and as strong and as healthy as you are? Some of us secure our lives more better than even what the Nigerian police force will do for you because the men of the Nigerian police force is underfunded, the, the, the numerical strength is not there, the, the infrastructures are not there, they don't even have the equipment, the walkie-talkies don't even work well, they don't even have power to charge. Go to Nigerian police station, they are using the generator. We must always tell ourselves the truth. So, to what end? How many divisions today in this country that a DPO can come out and boast of four heel losses? How often do governors convert this money into four heel losses? Are you not, okay, which, which states in this country today is doing committee policing or neighborhood watch and you are paying these people? We must see, it is high time we tell ourselves the truth and begin to go by what is right. Begin to go by the constitution. If you think that security vote is, has a purpose and the purpose is being met, then make it constitutional. Because again, the governor will not be answerable to anybody because it's free money for him or her. And that money is, there are some, there are some states in this country that collect as much as one billion money for security votes. And the man who is there, the woman who is supposed to be governor or whoever, is just enjoying that money. It's legit as far as I'm concerned. One billion times 12, that's 12 billion. You know what infrastructure that could do for the Nigerian police force? Or for the Nigerian army? So you are saying instead of security votes, 
be given to governors, it should be given to the uh, as we speak in this country, there are no functional surveillance camera. We were reading about Rwanda only recently, and you can see what the Nigeria, what the, the Rwanda army is doing with their surveillance camera to track criminals everywhere. As we speak today, I will say we don't have data of our bus drivers, of our, uh, those who are the commuters, yes. and so they can kidnap at will and no, but nothing happens. Even those things are trying. We are trying. Yes. We, are trying. Yes. We, are trying. Yes. we are doing all that. I'm not just talking about those. I'm talking no, about Nigeria. Yes. We should go I beyond. Just to say, in those I mean, the Edo State government wants to pay 30,000, but not all state government wants to do that. So we're talking about Nigeria. We should go beyond trying into implementations. Okay. It is not enough to say you are trying. We should begin to implement these things. I have a police station close to where I am, and as far as I'm concerned, to the best of my knowledge, I see them in private vehicles. I'm sure there's a division that, uh, by, that takes care of this place. Mm. If they come out with their vehicles today and they are going to check things happening around this vicinity, I'm sure it's, uh, they are going to be on private vehicles. If incidents are happening simultaneously at five separate points within the environment, do you think that the divisional police... Um, DPO. Uh, the, the divisional police yeah, station okay. uh, uh, can actually combat those five uh, uh, events at problem. the same time. Okay. It's not there. Anyway, let me just. Uh, so okay. we must tackle. No, Pastor, let him just beyond, uh, beyond, finish. beyond. Mm -hmm. we, it's a, security is a collective effort. Yes. We must play our part. But again, it is the duty of every gov government to provide and protect. I am a fan of this government. Okay, but the truth is that we must begin to do things the way it ought to be. This thank, is the 21st century. Thank you, Osei Boigbe. That's a wonderful contribution. But let's get the third of us to Yes, you are no, itching to make see, a comment. First and foremost, the issue of security vote is not for the purpose of the governance to consume. Okay. You have For the governor, you mean? Yes. yes. Okay. You have the police, you have the army, you have the SSS, you have the NDLA, you have uh, the customs, you have the immigration. They, they, all of them are involved in the security architecture. Okay. So at every given time, when it comes in, each of these arms are given a percentage for maintenance. Okay. To do what? Don't say to do what? But, but again, that takes us to... The police is central. Yes. The army is central. Yes. The navy is central. They are all in the budget. Yes. They get their location from Abuja. So to do what? The governor okay. of a state is the chief security officer of the state. He needs it. They, they always have what called security <laughs> meetings. That's on paper. He's not. No, no. Because again, a lot of commissioners... We saw in those days where commissioner police was not as able to the governor. Okay. So that's on paper. That was politics. That was politics. I'm telling you... Pastor, make your point. What is... Operational okay. in those states. Yes, I can see it anytime, anywhere. Security meetings are held, and issues of security are looked at. And what is area of concern is addressed instantly. The governor has bought uh, uh, these uh, armored vehicles. Armored vehicles, not one or two. He has bought uh, he lost vehicles many to stations so when you see policemen using a uh, color vehicle it was these guys kind because of operational, uh, operational i'm telling you it's yeah. a particular method now okay. it's not as if they don't have a vehicle in that station there is no police that doesn't have a helos vehicle for their in the evenings you see them they, they queue up drive around the cities and also show that they are sure uh, strength. Uh, strength pastor so, wado thank you I want to thank you very much for your comments. And uh, Austin Ebaigbe, you've made very wonderful uh, contribution to today's program. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Um, time is not always our friend. Uh, we hope that next week we'll come up with another uh, issue again on the program. If you enjoyed today's discussion, you enjoyed today's uh, episode of 60 Minutes Nigeria, keep a date with us. Next week, Thursday, God willing, uh, it will be another wonderful time on the show. Bye-bye.